Hey y'all, in this video we're going to talk about polygons. So a polygon is a closed figure in a plane and it's created by connecting line segments endpoint to endpoint um, with each segment intersecting exactly two other segments. Any one of the segments we refer to as a side of the polygon and the endpoints where the sides meet up is called a vertex of a polygon. Now the plural of the word vertex is vertices and this polygon that I've drawn here has six vertices, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And it also has six sides. Segment A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, and A, F. Those are the sides of the polygon. Now I'm going to attach additional vocabulary. Um, I'm going to attach the word adjacent. This is a very important word. You're going to see it over and over again and it means consecutive or next to each other. So vertices that are consecutive are vertices that are right next to each other. Like A and B are adjacent vertices. B and C are adjacent vertices. And you'll notice that these vertices that are adjacent or next to each other form the sides. Now non-adjacent vertices, for example, would be like A and C, A and D, and A and E. If I drew those line segments in, they would create something called a diagonal. It's not just vertices that can be adjacent. Sides can be adjacent. So we're talking about consecutive or sides that are right next to each other. So side AB is adjacent to side BC, and side AB is not adjacent to side ED, where they have to be right next to each other. Angles can also be adjacent. So angle A and angle B are adjacent to each other. They're angles that are right next to each other. A and C angles are not adjacent. Okay. Now, briefly on the naming, we would call this hexagon because it has six sides, or you can just call it generic polygon. And then you pick a letter to start with and you go around full circle either in either direction. So I can call this polygon A, B, C, D, E, F, or I can call it polygon F, E, D, C, B, A. But the key is that the vertices have to be listed uh, in, in order which they are adjacent to each other. You wouldn't call this uh, polygon F, D, C, B, A, E, right? They have to go in order. So since I mentioned diagonal, let's give the formal definition. A diagonal is a line segment connecting two non-adjacent vertices in a polygon. So I have two different types of polygons. One is a polygon A, B, C, D, E, F, and the other one is polygon G, H, I, J. And you'll notice that F, D is a diagonal because F and D are not adjacent. And H, J is a diagonal because H and J are not adjacent. So why did I choose these two? Um, because I need to give you two more words about polygons, which are ways to classify polygons. One way is called a concave polygon, and that's a polygon where a diagonal or part of a diagonal is on the outside of the polygon. So polygon GHIJ is concave because this diagonal that I drew is outside of the polygon. Now remember, it doesn't have to be the entire diagonal, it could just be part of the diagonal. To contrast a concave polygon, we have the convex polygon. And these are polygons where all of the diagonals are entirely on the inside or interior of the polygon. So this polygon A, B, C, D, E, F is a convex polygon because no matter which diagonals I draw, they're all going to be on the inside. So the word polygon is very vague. It can be any number of shapes and so of course there are special names based on the number of sides which we need to use. Everyone should be familiar with the triangle and the quadrilateral. Most of you are, can, uh, most of you know about the pentagon and the hexagon. Uh, seven sides is where people kind of don't remember the names and uh, you'll see it either as a heptagon or a septagon. Uh, eight octagon, nine nonagon, ten decagon, 11 and 12 are probably new to most people, 11 is un decagon, and 12 is do decagon. And past that, we usually don't remember the names, we just call it like a 13gon 
or an Engon after that, um, because that just gives that's that's too many names to memorize, y'all. So we're gonna stop at twelve. When we name these things, um, I can use generic polygon, but if I know the name by the number of sides, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to name this thing hexagon A, B, C, D, and E. Uh, it has to go in order around. So you just pick any vertex and you go around either clockwise or counterclockwise. And it doesn't matter which vertex you pick. I could name this thing C, D, E, F, A, B if I wanted to. Um, you just have to pick a vertex, go around, make sure you're listing them so that they're adjacent to each other. Okay, because that's the naming convention. When I give someone the name of the polygon, they have to be able to draw it, right, and label it. And so the convention is to pick a vertex and then go around it, uh, the polygon, vertex by vertex. Now, of course, triangles, easy, G-H-I. Um, it doesn't matter which one you pick, which direction you go. Uh, but luckily for us, triangles have a shorthand. I can just draw this little triangle symbol and then give the three letters of the vertices uh, to represent triangle, in this case, triangle GHI. I'm going to give you a little conjecture, which seems more like a definition. It says two polygons are congruent if and only if their corresponding sides and angles are congruent. And I chose to use this word now to bring up the word corresponding because this is actually an important word for us. Corresponding means matching. And here's an example of two polygons that I tell you are congruent. So a quadrilateral camp is congruent to quadrilateral site. And this is very important and very specific in the naming, okay? When I give you a statement like this that says that two polygons are congruent, by the way in which I wrote them, I am telling you which vertex matches with which vertex because they have to be written in the exact same order in terms of congruence. So I'm telling you that C and S are corresponding. So these two vertices match up. A, by the name A and I, are both in the second position. That means A and I are corresponding. That means T and M are corresponding. And that means E and P are corresponding. So the name itself gives us quite a bit of information. It tells us which vertices match. So then when we draw this, and since I know they're congruent, I know the corresponding angles have to match. So angle C and angle S are congruent. Angle A and I are congruent. Angle M and angle T are congruent. And angle P and angle E are congruent. And that also tells me which sides are congruent because, once again, the naming. CA forms a side and SI forms a side. And the way these are arranged, this statement here is telling me that CA is congruent to SI. And I can go around with other pairs of letters. A and M have to match with I and T, right? Even though these shapes are oriented differently, I could just use the names to determine which side is congruent to which side, which angle is congruent to which angle, and which vertex corresponds to which vertex. The name tells you everything. So of course we have special types of polygons too, like we have special types of angles. We have the equilateral polygon that says that all sides have the same measure. And the way I would draw that is I would draw my polygon and I would use the tick marks to show that the sides are equal. I can also have polygons that are equiangular, meaning all of the angles have the same measure. And I can do the same thing. I can draw my polygon and I can mark each of the angles. In this case, I used one tick mark per angle uh, to show that they are equiangular. And now that I have equilateral and equiangular, I can combine them into a very important word, the regular polygon. So by definition, a regular polygon is equilateral and equiangular. So all of the sides are equal length. All of the angles are equal measure. So by marking it like this, I'm telling you that I have, in this case, a regular quadrilateral. Now to end this video, I want to give a little bit of clarity about something about concave polygons. Uh, remember, concave polygons are the ones that look like they have a piece cut out of them. 
and their angles um, are a little different than a regular polygon. So when I talk about the angle of a polygon, what I'm really talking about is an angle on the interior, right? So I'm talking about this angle A or BAD or, or ADC or DCB, right? These inside angles. I'm not talking about the reflex angles on the outside, okay? Now, when I have a concave polygon where there's been a, something cut out of it, I can actually mark this outside angle here as a right angle. But that right angle that I marked is not actually the angle of the polygon. It's outside of this polygon, okay? The actual angle of the polygon is this reflex angle here, okay? Concave polygons work a little bit differently, and so we have to be very mindful of where the markings are. This right angle is not an angle of the polygon, okay? The angle of the polygon is its reflex on the inside. Now, there's a lot more with polygons to come, but we're gonna stop here, and I'll see you in the next video.